uh, all of you brilliant students of IIT from different uh, parts of the country I come today together here. Uh, you are going to learn the most essential four sutras of Gita. And I don't want to keep it a suspense for you. These four sutras, in one shot I will tell you, but I will elaborate them in four sittings. The first sutra is, this body is not all in all, soul exists. This body is not all in all, soul exists. The second sutra, this one life is not all in all, many more lifetimes exist. Uh, right now, I am in a human body, but there are many more living forms, many more life forms after this, the soul passes through, second one. Third one, this world which we see around us is not all in all, but spiritual world exists. There is a spiritual plane, there is a material plane. Right now we are in material plane. Um, but we will also talk about how do we attain the spiritual plane. And the fourth one, we are not all in all, there is a God in control. Uh, that's the fourth one. <clears throat> so it's called the all in all sutras, uh, the four sutras. This body is not all in all, soul exists. Uh, this one life is not all in all, many more lives exist. This material world is not all in all, spiritual world exists. We are not all in all, there is a God in control beyond us. So the four things. And each of these four sutras, I'll be elaborating for you, uh, with some uh, slideshow also, along with that. Uh, it will be logically presented, uh, with reason, with examples, analogies, uh, and you are free to ask me any questions. Uh, and uh, mm, this, uh, this knowledge of Gita is becoming very, very popular all over the world. Because once you have uh, uh, this knowledge of Gita, your perspective to life becomes highly evolved. Yeah? Like uh, Einstein quoted from Bhagavad Gita, yeah. Oppenheimer quoted from Bhagavad Gita, Dr. Radha Krishnan, former president of India, quoted from Gita. Even Henry David Thoreau, um, Emerson, they all adored the Bhagavad Gita. And great Acharyas like Shankaracharya, Shripal Namarajacharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Madhvacharya, they all have greatly appreciated also. And here all of you are from IIT, uh, you are known for your intelligence, you are certainly very outstanding in your technical field, and now you are getting an opportunity to excel in your spiritual field also. Because uh, traditionally, you will see in the ancient times, the kings, also became Raja Rishis. Raja means he is driven by passion and Rishi means driven by saintliness. So the kings added saintliness to that personality and they became Raja Rishi. It's a combination of Sattva and Rajas. Rajas gives you the drive to achieve things in life and Sattva gives, adds the saintly and holy flavor to your personality. Then one can become great king like Arjuna, or like uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, or Gaya, great Shivaji Maharaj, Chandragupta Maurya. And the same is true for girls also. Whether you are a boy or a girl, if you uh, add Sattva to your personality, then you will become a very uh, uh, long-term thinker, uh, and you will be able to make decisions in life very wisely. So right in the beginning, uh, I am showing you a slide uh, here. Look at this slide. You are the soul and you are awarded with two uh, avenues, mind and the body. Hmm? These three words are very well known nowadays, body, mind, soul. Yeah. So the uh, soul, the yellow one I have shown, that is a real you. And over you, there are two coverings, mind and body. Mind is given uh, to store your desires and memories, and the body is given to execute your desires. Uh, just like, for example, say, uh, I am having a desire to play piano. I store the desire in my mind. And uh, I use my body to go to the market and buy a piano and 
I can play the piano. I execute my desire. Uh, similarly, say you have a desire to uh, do a skydiving. So that's a desire in your mind. When you go to college, when there is a holiday, you may go and then get a parachute and you may want to do the gliding and you're executing it with your body. Uh, so the mind is like a microprocessor uh, where you have written the program for uh, your desires. Mm -hmm. And the body is like a servo motor, which executes those desires. And why am I beginning with this? Because uh, I am sure that every one of you assembled here today, you know, uh, you know, uh, every one of you, uh, you have uh, an understanding of holistic. Hmm? What is holistic well-being? Holistic well-being means body, mind, soul, well-being. Hmm? All the three. So. Uh, nowadays, many people have become very conscious of their healthy bodies. They are very careful in avoiding junk food and eating salads. Many are going for brisk walk in the morning. Many are doing pranayam and yoga to keep the body fit and healthy. Yeah. Many are adopting a sattvic lifestyle. Uh, that's wonderful. And they are doing meditation to keep the mind calm and everything. In the same manner, uh, we also need a purpose in life, meaning in life, goal of life, huh? and uh, experience that inner fulfillment. There are two words in Sanskrit, Nishreyas and Abhyudai. Nishreyas means fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Abhyudai means achievement mm -hmm. or accomplishments. So think about it. There are many people who have climbed the corporate ladder and or they have started their own dot com company and uh, they have made a lot of money and uh, achieved a lot of accolades, uh, awards, and everything. But in their personal life, they are not happy. Mm. There is something lacking seriously in their life. Some people even commit suicide. Mm. You see that. So, therefore, we need a balance between this fulfillment, inner fulfillment, and outside accomplishments. Many times, our outside accomplishments are good for showing off to the world around us. Mm -hmm. But inner fulfillment is a dire need of the soul. We need to feel that inner happiness to be a stable personality. So, you will learn that as we proceed. Like here you see, uh, as we proceed through this course, you know, you will learn about self-awareness that Lord Krishna speaks about in Bhagavad Gita. Self-awareness means you understand, I am the soul and I have a mind and body. Uh, and in my mind are certain scripts. Uh, which are good scripts and there are bad scripts. Mm -hmm. And the good scripts make people think you are a good person. And we also have certain bad, bad scripts, we all know about it. For example, some are soft-natured, some are very strong-tempered, mm -hmm. isn't it? Some are uh, you know, excellent in their work they do. Some may do mediocre work. Mm -hmm. You know, some may be greedy. Some may be satisfied. So these are all scripts stored in the mind. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness means to be able to look at your own mind with your soul. Huh? Look at your mind and see what are some of the scripts my mind has which need to be cleansed and what are some of the scripts which are good in me, in my strengths and my room for improvement. Huh? You can see that. That self-awareness means you are able to look at yourself. What type of person am I? Mm -hmm. Very few people do that. I am sure you can be one because you have opted for this course. Uh, you are uh, going to learn this in four sutras to learn to observe yourself, who you are and uh, how you can make a better version of yourself. Uh, like for example, say one of you published a book. Uh, after one year you felt that some changes need to be made in the book to make it a better book. Uh, a better offering. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was too theoretical, you felt. Later on, you modified it. Huh? And then you publish a second version of the book. Huh? Then you may publish a third or a fourth version. Then you may add some exercises to it, add some pictures to it, make the book more user-friendly, isn't it? Just as your book evolves huh, over time with your experience, uh, with your maturity, huh, with your understanding, in the same manner, your mind can also be purified and evolved to become a better and better individual. Huh? So, uh, it, it is God's kindness that He has given us the opportunity of human life. In the human life, you can do the self-awareness. And then on the right side, you see I have written self-management. 
and I, I can manage certain emotions which are not proper. I can sanitize those emotions huh? and behave as a proper human being huh? uh, instead of behaving in a barbaric way. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes a human being stoops down to behaving like an animal due to greed and selfishness mm -hmm. and exploitative propensities. Mm -hmm. But we can uh, uplift our mind by bringing out angel-like behavior. Mm -hmm. There's an angel within us, there's an animal within us. So, animals act instinctively. Uh, the angel-like behavior will come if you act thoughtfully, think twice before you speak or act. So, from this self-awareness, you can practice self-management. Later on, you can do one more thing, social awareness, which means you can understand the climate of the colleagues working in your office or the students who are around you. What is the climate of each individual, of their mind? Oh, this person is, you know, the person who will lose his temper fast, I have to be careful. This person cannot be trusted. This person is good, he is, you know, he is very responsible. Uh, so, you can know about the mindset and the nature and behavior of different people. Uh, if I give work to this person, he may take a longer time. So, I should give the work well in advance. Uh, so, you study about the mindset and nature of different people around you, not to point fingers at them or criticize them, that's not the goal. Uh, but to be able to facilitate them and be able to work with them successfully, that's what we call as relationship management. Uh. Like you see, when you do social awareness of people around you, then you can manage your relationship with them properly. Mm -hmm. In this world, you come across people of all varieties. Mm -hmm. Amongst your personal relationships, say your relatives and friends, uh, and at the same time your colleagues in the office mm -hmm. or the students in the college. Mm -hmm. So, how do we deal with different people differently? Mm -hmm. So, people with different natures. So, you will become expert at these things, provided you do these four items, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship management. Let's proceed further. So, here is a simple example. As the driver drives a car, the soul drives the living body. You know, we will be showing many scientific researchers have proved it also. So, there are two things in this world, matter and spirit. Think of, uh, uh, you know, your drone camera flying you know, and uh, taking a video or something. Mm -hmm. Children may think that the drone camera is flying on its own, huh? but you know very well there is a person operating it, controlling it. Mm -hmm. Even auto automatic Tesla car, you know, may be called as an automated car, but the car is actually uh, uh, operated by someone remotely. Mm -hmm. And also the car is serving someone's purpose, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, one time I was walking on the road, I saw a gigantic hands uh, digging and uh, throwing sand, huge. Uh, I was wondering, my lord, how this big hand is working on its own. Uh, but then I saw behind that hand, there was a small cabin. In that cabin was sitting a man, he was pressing the button. And he is making the hand operate like that. What do you call it? JCB. <laughs> Isn't it? So, in the same manner, machines cannot function on their own. They need someone to operate. Uh, which is spirit. So, spirit is living, matter is dead. And the living spirit has to touch the machine. We cannot show one machine in this entire creation which operates on its own. There is no such machine. Name a machine. Even the robots, for example, they appear to be smiling, they appear to be raising the eyebrows, speaking, but everybody knows they are programmed. There is a clear difference between a machine and a living person. Say, I have a mobile with me. I keep alarm at 3 o'clock in the early morning. I sleep at 9, get up at 3. So, one day I got up at 2.45. I went to the washroom. While I was taking a bath, I heard the mobile ringing, 3 o'clock. And all other fellow devotees were all getting disturbed by the mobile. I wanted to stop it, but then I am already in the washroom. And I want to tell the mobile, hey, foolish mobile, I am already up. You are ringing to wake me up, but I am already up. Keep quiet, but you won't keep quiet because it is a machine after all. He has no understanding. He will keep on ringing, get up, get up, get up, get up, because he's a machine. Imagine if I told one of you, if you are sleeping in the same room as me, I tell you that, please wake me up at 3. And I am already in the washroom at 2.45. So, 3 o'clock you will look around and see, oh, Radhisham Prabhu has already gotten up. So, you are not going to make a sound. 
please get up, get up, get up. You because you are a human being, you are a spirit, you are living, you are conscious. Unlike that, you know, alarm clock, you are conscious. That's what makes you different. Like one time they showed in the TV, a robot was doing Arati to Balaji. It was ringing a bell, it was rotating. Some farmers in the village, they were amazed. They said, wow, you know, science has become so advanced. Even a machine is doing Arati for the Lord. But for any of you students, you know, it is a, it's peanuts, it's a cakewalk. It's an easy thing to do because you can write a program in your microprocessor for linear and rotary movements of the servo motors. What is so great about, uh, you know, robo performing the RP? It is simply a mechanical phenomenon, you know, electronic phenomenon. One can do that. Hmm? Do you know very well that when he is doing the RP, he is doing it mechanically like a machine. There is no feeling or bhava or emotion in that. Hmm? When you are worshipping the Lord, you are offering prayer, your mind and emotions are involved. Hmm? You will see that a machine cannot look at a picture of a beggar with a begging bowl and then, you know, feel some compassion. Hmm? Nor can a machine look at a picture of yeah, a man who are very intimately dealing with each other and feel lusty. Machine cannot feel those emotions. Nor can a robo look at a flower and smell its fragrance and say, you know, how wonderful is this fragrance or how sweet is the song. You know, they cannot talk about these things because these are only possible in a living body where there is a spirit. And that spirit is a soul, spirit soul, which is you. So now coming back to this car example, the car is matter and the driver is spirit and you are the driver of the body. Mm -hmm. In all our bodies, we are the driver and we are seated in this bodily car. So we are not his body, we are resident of the body. Mm -hmm. We are not the body itself. Body is simply like a dress over the soul. Mm -hmm. Just like today you all are wearing one dress, tomorrow you will wear another dress. Mm -hmm. You change your dress. Similarly, the soul also, today is seated in a human body. Tomorrow, the soul can sit in the angel's body or it can sit in a tree's body or animal body. All living bodies, uh, wherever there is uh, living life and consciousness, soul is present. Hmm? So, so, these are the things we are going to learn just now. Am I matter or am I spirit? Hmm. And the six changes of living body and scientific proofs and mind's mechanism. Then. So, okay, let's proceed ahead with matter and spirit. If somebody asks you this question, who are you? He may tell you a name, huh? isn't it? So, there is one Dr. Hadi Monson uh, in Illinois College of Medicine. He says that hmm, he took all these uh, chemicals in a human body, hmm, listed them all, calcium, you know, phosphate and potassium, sulfur, sodium, magnesium and all that. Hmm. And then he also said, all these chemicals put together cost only rupees 110 as per INR, <laughs> Indian uh, currency. Yeah. So, uh, think about it. So, you know, are, are we these chemicals, honestly speaking? Uh, we experience love for our mother. Uh, we experience joy when we hear a poem. Uh, we have these emotions. Uh, or we just a bundle of chemicals and nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. Think about it seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, you, if you see here, look at this. This is uh, Shri Devi, one very famous Bollywood actress from Tamil Nadu. So, uh, recently, a few years ago, she passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, when she passed away, she looked like this. Everything is there. You know, chemicals are the same chemicals, but she didn't exhibit any feelings or thinking or desires or movement or consciousness, just see, because the soul is gone. Yeah. Body is the same. That's what you are saying. Yeah. When spirit is present, the body looks very beautiful. Now, when the spirit is gone, nobody will want to go near a yeah. dead body. Shankaracharya sang in one poem, Yavat pavano nivasati gehe, tavat prichati kushalam gehe, gatavati vayu deha paye, varya vibhyati tasmin kaye, bajago vindam, bajago vindam, go vindam bhaja mudhamate. He's saying, when the soul is present in the body, 
You know, everybody will come and ask you, how do you do? And you will say, I'm fine and all that. But once the soul leaves the body, you know, the body is fed into the fire, even by the relatives. Nobody will want to come near. In Bangalore, one uh, young IT couple was living and the husband suddenly got a massive heart attack. He was 35 years old and he left the body. He died at 9 o'clock at night. The wife immediately called her, uh, her parents in Mumbai and said, oh, this fellow has died suddenly. And the parents said, oh, really? Now it is too late at night. You know, you get some ice and keep the body in the freezer and we will arrive in the early morning, they said. And the wife asked the parents that, you know, what about me? Where will I stay tonight? She asked. They said, you stay in another room. But she was afraid. Bhariyam vidyati tasmin kaya. The same body which she embraced and kissed, but now she cannot even stay in the same house with that body. She's afraid. Because once the soul has left the body, the body becomes obnoxious, abominable. It is fit to be just fed in the fire. Just think about it. It is happening to everybody's body in the whole creation. Anybody who has got a material body. Therefore, this is a very serious knowledge, very important knowledge. Because if you are not this body, which is perishable body, you are the soul. It's very important for you to know about the soul, who you are and how you can blossom in your life uh, and attain true happiness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you see Lord Krishna is saying here, Na jayate mriyate va kadachin nayam bhutva bhavita va na bhuyaha ajo nityashashvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sharire This is what he is saying. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. Uh, like we say, the energy can either be created or destroyed, energy is appearing in one form, reappears in another form without any loss or gain. We say about energy, conservation of energy. In the same manner, the soul also is a spiritual energy. It's a spiritual spark, uh, spiritual personality. The soul cannot be cut by scissors. The soul cannot be burned by fire. The soul cannot be uh, wetted by water, moistened by water. It cannot be dried by air. Uh, it, uh, it exists when you are living. And when the body is dead, then the soul leaves the body and goes to another body. Just like you leave one house, one apartment and occupy another apartment. Like that the soul moves from one body to another. See here? See this picture? See the soul is moving uh, to the uh, changing bodies. Uh, like you see here, the body changed from, body is only matter, so the spirit. Body is not conscious, soul is conscious. Body changes, soul doesn't change at all. Body is temporary, soul is eternal. Body is always dead, soul is always alive. Hmm? What is the meaning of this? See, if I put a gloves in my hand and I move like this, the gloves appears to be lively, but the gloves does not have life. Hmm? Because as soon as I take my hand out, then the gloves will fall. Similarly, the body appears alive, but it is animated by the soul. When the soul gets out of the body, the body drops dead. The body has no value. Huh? Just like, say, I bring gulab jamun in a carry bag. Mm -hmm. And I take the gulab jamun and keep it in a plate. And the carry bag, what happens to it? It just goes straight into dustbin. It has no value. Huh? Similarly, the body is the carry bag for the soul. That's all. Otherwise, the body in and of itself doesn't have much value. The soul is a real personality. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you see, in material viewpoint, people think like this. You know, we are the body is made up of matter hmm? and we are no more than a chemical bundle. Everything is finished at the time of death, like that people think. This is the understanding most materialistic approach to life. People who have, they think like that. Hmm? Uh, but here in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says here, yeah, uh, we are not the material body of flesh and bones, but we are Atma, encaged in the material body. Hmm? And uh, we don't die when the material body stops to function. Huh? As I told you, the soul uh, is a spark of life and we leave one body and go to another. Uh, this is a spiritual viewpoint that Lord Krishna gives in Gita. This has innumerable advantages. Uh, you see, uh, uh, when you know that uh, I am not this body, I am the spirit soul, that's the first knowledge Lord Krishna gave to Arjuna. Uh, he told Arjuna, there is nothing to lamb at Arjuna uh, because you are never going to die in the battle. Uh, you are aloof from the body. And even the profits and losses you get uh, in this world, they come and go, just like the waves of the ocean come and go. You don't have to take them too seriously. You are a spiritual, you are always happy. Huh? 
we are always cheerful. Mm. So, this knowledge gave such confidence to Arjuna. Crying Arjuna became a confident Arjuna, you see. Uh, bewildered and confused Arjuna became uh, Arjuna with very confident decisions at the end. So, the uh, spiritual knowledge is going to increase your inner strength. Uh, it will also give you, give you the courage to face challenges and failures in life which you may have to face occasionally. Because life is always not a bed of roses. Huh? Sometimes life is smooth sailing. Other times life may be stormy. Huh? That's like an ocean. Sometimes, you know, ocean is calm. Other times there is storm. Huh? But Gita gives you a knowledge of permanent identity of you, which is a soul. So you'll never be shaken up in all type of situations in life. Here you see in the picture it is shown. Uh, a lady is painting the uh, cage and ignoring the parrot. Similarly, people are decorating their bodies, you know, so many hairstyles. People are hairstyle conscious, watch conscious, belt conscious, shoe conscious, you know, conscious of everything external body, but they are not soul conscious. Huh? Uh, so, just like uh, she is just polishing, forgetting to feed the parrot. Similarly, people don't know about the soul. Huh? And Gita begins with the knowledge of the soul. So, let us see the six changes of the living body. Here you see, uh, first thing is, body undergoes six changes. Like think about your own life. Huh? You know, your life began with, you know, you were born in this world, isn't it? Then your body grew up. Your body was a small baby and it has grown up now. Huh? Then you come to the teenage. Huh? And then one gets married. And then, then one produces byproducts like children and everything. And then as we get older, body dwindles. And then on the body undergoes death. These six changes happen in every living body. You will see that. Mm -hmm. Whereas matter undergoes only one change, depreciation. Mm -hmm. Like if this table remains here for a million years, it will just turn into powder. That's all. Disintegration and depreciation. That's all. No more change. Whereas in a living body, the body grows. Mm -hmm. You can never see your car grow. You can never see your computer grow. But a living body grows. Wherever the spirit is present, that body grows. And it is maintained. Uh, and, and it also produces byproducts. And then dwindles and death. These are six changes. Take a dog, take a cat, take a tree, take a human, take an eagle, take an aquatic. All of them, all the living bodies undergo these six changes. Second thing, uh, another major difference between living body and dead robo. A male and female species, you know, machines cannot reproduce, whereas living bodies can reproduce. See here, man and woman come together to produce a baby, and dogs produce puppies, birds also produce offsprings, uh, cats and swans, they all produce their offsprings. But have you ever seen this? A truck and a bus came together and produced a car, <laughs> uh, or a desktop computer and a laptop computer produced a pumped up computer or something. You don't find uh, machines coming together and reproducing like that. Only living bodies do that. Huh? And living bodies can multiply through this kind of expansion. Huh? And the third one, living body has consciousness. Huh? Uh, where sometimes you feel cold, so you wrap yourself with a blanket. Sometimes it is hot, then you put on the fan or AC, isn't it? You have uh, that feeling. Hmm? You can see, you can have that. Similarly, you can also think, <clears throat> some of you may say that, what about uh, computer playing uh, chess? Is it not thinking? No, that is borrowed intelligence. Huh? In, a, in a computer, for example, even the robot also, huh? you know, multiple engineers put their automobile intelligence in a shell called as expert systems. Huh? And they put together and then uh, AI, that's how the AI works. It can only repeat what is fed to that machine. That nothing new. Even if computer defeats you in playing a chess game, that means the combined intelligence of multiple chess players is superior to our ability to play chess well. That's all. <laughs> Not that the machine has defeated us. Machine is just using a borrowed intelligence. Hmm? Uh, see here, your robo can say bye-bye to you. Huh? And here is a girl saying bye-bye. It's not the same. Huh? Isn't it? In a living body has consciousness. A machine does not have consciousness. This is the main difference. Yeah. And uh, therefore, these are the three major differences between a living body and a robo. One is the six changes. Male, female can reproduce and thinking, feeling, willing. Hmm. So now let us go for some scientific proofs. Huh? 
uh, uh, let us begin with simple thing. When somebody has died, we say, so and so, she has passed away, he has passed away. Now, who has passed away? Body is very much there, you know. But the soul has passed away. Uh, similarly, if you have a, you know, sensor saying, I see red light or I see light. Actually, this Sensors actually may record, but they don't have any feelings. Hmm? But here you see the old man and woman, they're remembering their youthful days. And they have the memories. Hmm? And the machine does not uh, reflect back and feel such consciousness. It's a dead matter. Hmm? Hmm. Like for example, if a video is watching uh, and recording a cam, like I am speaking now, say a video is recording my talk now, it doesn't have any feelings. Huh? All of you students, you are hearing the same talk. You are getting feelings. And you are thinking also about what I am saying. Huh? Isn't it? Thinking, feeling, willing. That's, that, that's how you are the spirit soul. See, here is uh, Dr. Michael Sabam. He has done research on near-death experiences. I happened to read uh, this Reader's uh, Digest in 1996. There was one uh, special edition of Reader's Digest, big, uh, thick volume. So, in that they had shown many out-of-body experiences of people. Over the loft, they keep triangular, rectangular, circular objects, some objects. And a person is lying on his bed below. And they asked him to go out of the body, see those objects, come back and draw it in a paper. And he, exactly he could draw it, whatever was kept on the loft. Yeah? So, and that was one of the experiments they had shown. Similarly, uh, there are experiments that uh, Michael Sabam, he talks about how um, somebody who experienced a traumatic situation, uh, you know, had a near-death experience. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, a person underwent some accident, like uh, there was a bullock cart carrying some reinforced bars and somebody was coming in the rickshaw looking here and there and the bars entered into the person's belly and came out and he screamed, he was about to die, rushed to the hospital emergency ward. And when they are operating his belly and doing surgery, the soul came out and was watching from the top. Although the brain waves are flat, this fellow could say exactly what the nurses were speaking, doctor was speaking, and because he was, the soul was fully conscious. So there are many researches on near-death experience and out-of-body experience. See, so many books are published. You will see here all these books. So this is another aid proof, scientific proof that you are different from your body. Here is Dr. Ian Stevenson. He has done, uh, uh, 2000 is the world news, he has done more than 3000 case studies of uh, people remembering that Purva Janma are the previous life. That means somebody right now remembers that in my previous body I was such and such. Okay. You know, and now I left that body and I come into another body. You know? So there are so many books here you can see. Uh, now, there may be 100 books uh, and uh, cases of reincarnation, many, many books. Not only in India, but all across the globe, people are remembering their past lives. Uh, many thousands of uh, people's real history is taken. And because it's a scientific research, now doctorates are also being awarded. Doctorate theses are being awarded uh, for the research on reincarnation. Hmm? Now, there are uh, a Department of Consciousness Studies. All across the globe, more than 25 universities are awarding MS in consciousness studies. They study about the mind, about consciousness, about reincarnation, and their degrees are being awarded for this, which goes to show that this is becoming a very important subject now, which means how the soul, you know, lives in one particular body, and then he leaves the body, and what type of body he gets. Because, as I showed you before, you are the soul with mind and body. You, depending on what you store in the mind, it takes you to the next body accordingly. Huh? Like for example, sometimes when a train is going through a jungle, some animal is dead. There are nasty smells of the dead animal coming, uh, carried by the wind. Hmm? Or if the train is going through a flower garden, then fragrance of the flowers. Hmm? So the mind and the uh, wind becomes a vehicle for carrying good fragrance or bad fragrance. Similarly, your mind becomes a vehicle for good karma vasanas or bad karma vasanas. Huh? So, if you have done good karma vasanas carried by your mind, in the next life you will have a handsome body, you uh, will be born to rich parents, you will have a very healthy body, you will have good education, you will be very smart, you will be at the top ranks of society, mm -hmm. because you have done some good activities now. Huh? 
If you have done bad activities, then your mind is carrying impure karma vasanas. Then that takes one to be born in a slum with ugly looking face, poor, body with diseases, uh, and one may be an illiterate like that. So how the soul uh, goes with the mind, uh, and the mind takes the soul. That's why the mental existence transforms into a tangible form as soon as there is an opportunity. Uh, like you, you also can see yourself. Like if you say you have a desire to play football in your mind, very soon you are going to get a ball and you'll be playing. So you are actually giving shape to your desire. Like that. Or say you have a desire to shape up your body, so you go to a treadmill and you do that, isn't it? That means our desires, we translate them. First, like you, I want to make a building. I have a desire. Then I make a blueprint. Then I make the actual building. So it's a very scientific phenomenon it is. The soul carries the mind. Mind is like the storehouse of his desires, experiences, uh, and uh, previous experiences, and also plans, ideas, and all these things are stored in the mind. Hmm? So here, the uh, researcher Dr. Ryan Stevenson says, like here this girl is feeling some phobia, hmm? as you see here. So we all have some, we've seen that people feeling phobia, that is a connection to the previous life. Like uh, she drowned in the water in the previous life. Now in this life, she has a fear for water. It was proven like that. Similarly, here this uh, lady was killed by somebody with a knife. Now any knife she sees, she screams. And that phobia has a connection. Hmm? For bladed weapons, she has a fear. Yeah. Similarly, somebody was shot in the previous life. In this life, when she sees a gun, she is horrified. Hmm? So Anne Stevenson found that the phobias are carried by the mind. To the next point. And uh, another interesting thing Einstein, uh, Ian Stevenson says, look at these two boys. They are genetically same. These two children are born from the same egg. One egg splits into two and then these two children are born. So being genetically same, should their behavior also not be same? Same DNA, same behavior should be there. Why are they having two different natures? Now I will uh, request all of you friends, think about twins whom you know. Do they have similar natures? They are totally different natures. Therefore, Ian Stevenson says, why they have two different natures? Because two souls have entered these two bodies. Although genetically bodies appear same, you know, two different souls have entered, so they have two different natures. Mm -hmm. Like that he says. Here is a uh, short movie, which I am not going to show you, but uh, Harshit will put it in the, put the link of this. He will give you, you can see at your leisure. It's about 15 minutes uh, video on yeah, boy James remembering his uh, this thing. Uh, so, in this there are reincarnation studies. Uh, then here is a little girl, uh, you know, when, um, who remembered her previous life, uh, Shukla. She was Mana in the previous life, and uh, she remembered when she went to the village. She remembered her father-in-law and husband and husband's brothers, her home, everything she remembered. Uh, in this way, 30 things she recollected. Hmm? All of them she recollected perfectly. And Ian Stevenson personally researched this case. And he said, this is not ordinary thing. All of you think for a moment, there is set A, and there is set B, and there is an intersecting element. Set A is Shukla in her previous life was Mana. Hmm? And there is set B is Shukla now, that body. But she is remembering something from the previous life, which is staring now in her mind, which is the intersecting element. So how she is able to remember what is the intersecting element in between that body and this body? The answer is very simple. It is a soul. The same soul which was in one body has come into this body. Hmm? So there are many people. Look at this. Uh, Benjamin Franklin says, Finding myself to exist in the world, I believe, I shall in some shape or other always exist. Hmm? And similarly, others have also spoken about, you know, springing from the dead and again living Socrates talks about it. Many others have spoken about it. Both scientists and scholars have spoken about it. Mm -hmm. There are many practical benefits of this knowledge. I'm going to conclude the talk now and take some questions from you. Uh, um, you see, I, I told you, uh, you, are, uh, you have your body, mind, soul. The mind uh, and uh, 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 the mind is like the leader of the senses, as you see here. Mm -hmm. Our eyes, nose, tongue, ears, and skin are knowledge-acquiring senses, and their leader is the mind. 
and the mind is filled with uh, thoughts and uh, desires and experiences. And above the mind is the intelligence, which is the decision maker. Hmm? So, uh, right now you are acquiring knowledge, which is uh, strengthening your intelligence. Huh? So, once the intelligence is uh, stronger, you have knowledge of what is soul and who you are and everything, then it can give guidance to mind and senses to act properly. And mind and senses will not act erratically. Hmm? See, mind is sometimes compared to an elephant. See, your mind can be like a good elephant or like a mad elephant. A good elephant can lift trunk of wood, it can give blessings, huh? it can carry people on its back also, then it is in a, having a good nature. But the same elephant can, uh, when it goes mad, berserk, my lord, very deadly, huh? it is very mighty and powerful, it can kill people, hmm? it can damage cars and bikes. You see, we have videos in the YouTube, I must have seen how the mad elephants can really create havoc, isn't it? So, I am sure you all would want your mind to be like a trained elephant, isn't it? Yeah, untrained mind is like a flood, but a trained mind is like a dam. Yeah? So, dam is a place where you conserve energy and you use it for irrigation purposes at whatever time you want. Yeah? An untrained mind is like a flood, which causes havoc. Flood can never do good destroys houses, carries other cattle, kills people. No? So, therefore, to uh, make the train, mind a trained mind uh, and uh, trained senses, you need to strengthen your intelligence by acquiring the knowledge of the Gita. Mm? So, today you started with this and uh, like here you see the picture here, you have five senses are horses, mind is uh, the ropes, intelligence is the driver and the soul is sitting in the chariot, the chariot is your body. So, this is in Mundaka Upanishad. Hmm? The example is, Katha Upanishad also has this example. So, Yamaraj is telling to Nachiketas uh, about this also. Example. That means, if the driver is strong, he can take charge of the ropes and the horses. Huh? The uh, intelligence is strong, it can control the mind and senses. And then you, the soul, can be very happy huh, in this world. Now, most of the uh, uh, young uh, boys and girls nowadays, uh, you know, they are facing acute uh, crisis of emotions nowadays. Somebody is suffering from broken love, somebody is suffering from insecurity, uh, somebody is suffering from unhealthy comparison and revengeful thoughts. And people don't know how to handle their emotions. The mind is creating havoc and they have no intelligence about the soul. No? And many of them find their senses going wild. Some are suffering from obesity because of uncontrolled eating habits. No? So. If you want to take charge of your life by self-awareness, here is where you begin. You strengthen your driver intelligence by study of the Gita. Hmm? Look at this. Here the driver has no control because all the horses are running in all directions. <laughs> so, first thing we need to strengthen the intelligence. Huh? Yeah. And uh, here is a simple method of mantra meditation, which I do. I find it immensely helpful. Hmm? You will find uh, uh, in uh, every spiritual path, even Buddhists chant Namu Avida Bhutsu. No. Muslims chant Namaz. Christians chant Hail Mary. And uh, Jains chant Navakar Mantra. No. And we chant Hare Krishna. So, this kind of uh, taking out a little time to repeat a sacred sound, the sound has a calming effect. No. It calms your mind and also it will help you to contemplate and reflect and become a thinking person. We will tell about that more in a future session. Uh, here you can see, in the picture here, when people identify with the body, they quarrel like this. Uh, or Hindu versus Muslim, or white versus black, rich versus poor, educated versus illiterate, beautiful versus ugly. So, in this way, people quarrel like this, seeing the external body. Uh, you know, uh, there were two great uh, saints I met. One was from Germany and one was from America. The one uh, from America was telling uh, to the other one, say, your forefathers killed my forefathers huh? because he was a Jew. So the Jew was telling the German, your forefathers killed my forefathers. But I have no hatred for you. Why? Because I know I am not my body. You are not your body. You are a spiritual. I am spiritual. Mm -hmm. So, they could uh, have affection for each other. Just see that. No? So, if we can understand the knowledge of the spirit, soul, 
then we can unite the whole world in that platform. Just about uh, uh, five, six years ago, uh, uh, I was there in uh, Calcutta. Mm -hmm. There was a very amazing, uh, uh, great procession there where 120 world countries had come and together and all of them were holding their flag and everybody was chanting this Hare Krishna and all of them were, you know, going on the procession. I was also there. I participated also. So it really touched my heart because, you know, in this way, when all people understand we are not the body, we are the soul and the soul is a part of God, uh, then they can have reverence for all life. Every life deserves to be given respect. Every life deserves to be treated affectionately, you know, whether it be a human or animal or a bird or anybody like that. So in this way, it produces a universal brotherhood. Huh? See, what unites us, the European, Chinese, white, black, everybody comes together when they all understand we are not the body, we are spirit, soul. Huh? Yeah. People from all walks of life can come together and recognizing their similarity in the spirit. Huh? Similarly, here you find somebody is feeling inferiority complex. I am very short, black, ugly, poor family, you know, life doesn't seem worth living on. You want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, the other person who is soul conscious, he is thinking, I am a pure spirit soul. I have abundant potential. I am not this body, superficial body. I am a healthy and happy soul. So, uh, therefore, his heart is full of love, joy, serenity and compassion, you see. Because this external covering is like a dress over the soul. Uh, uh, every time you change it, it's not a very important thing. You, the soul, is very important. Uh. See, here this fellow is thinking, he wants to put a big amount in Swiss bank and just enjoy life, moving around in cars with no worry. Uh. He is a selfish person. He doesn't think of the environment or the world around him. Whereas here you find another person uh, is... Uh, 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 because he understands that in the body of the cow also there is a spirit soul. Uh, that was the cow or any creature for that matter deserves to be respected and cared for, you know, just as we care for other humans. Mm. So this is a summary. I'm just showing you a summary now. Uh, first you learned about I'm a matter of spirit. Uh, we told you that, you know, how the body is just uh, like a car and the soul is a driver. Mm. And there are six changes in the body. Uh, explain that. And the three differences I told you. One is uh, thinking, feeling, willing. Mm. And another one is about the uh, six changes. Uh, and uh, the uh, first one is about consciousness. Yeah. And then scientific proofs also we explained that. And okay. So now I can take some questions from you all. Yeah. Anybody would like to ask any question or comment? Yeah. Thank you for your rapt attention and enthusiastic participation. So another uh, 10 minutes we have, we can take some questions. Are there questions in the chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Soham. Yes, yeah, Soham. Yes, yeah, Soham, I'm, I, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Tell me. Uh, brilliant. So the food for the soul is A, B, C, D. I'll tell you what is this A, B, C, D. A for association. So you come in the association of people who all are, uh, uh, who have the saintly nature. Huh? For example, Dhruva, when he was, uh, there was a boy called Dhruva, he was very badly hurt by his stepmother. So he went to his mother, Suniti, who gave a very uplifting advice to him. Huh? She told him how the soul can meditate on God and attain perfection in life and progress in life. So somebody who can actually take you from material platform to spiritual platform. You need association of such people. That's A. Huh? Association means spiritual discussion, knowledge transmission, heart transformation. Huh? 
Like today we had a spiritual discussion. And then say you got some knowledge transmitted to you now for contemplation. And uh, gradually there is a heart transformation. What kind of transformation? A cruel person becomes a compassionate person. Angry person becomes a peaceful person. Selfish person becomes a selfless person. A violent person becomes a non-violent person. Isn't it? A person who is, uh, you know, uh, having bhoga vritti, the adapt seva vritti. A person with enjoying mentality wants to serve like Somebody was like a Ravana mentality, they came to Hanuman mentality. That is a change of heart. So that is association, A. And B is Bhagavad Gita. Every day, have a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is. Srila Prabhupada has written very beautiful Bhagavad Gita as it is. Just one page a day. Just five minutes every day. And see for chanting Hare Krishna. So I chant in this Japa beats. Every day, just one mala for 108 times. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So in one one money chant, one one mantra, it takes you ten minutes only. So five minutes of reading Bhagavad Gita, ten minutes of chanting. A, B, C. Mm -hmm. And the D is the devotional diet. Mm -hmm. So whatever you eat in the hostel also, you can just fold your palms and pray to Lord. Thank you for the food you have supplied us. Um, we can't create this. It's only His grace. So thank God for the food He has given you. That is D. And E is Engagement in some seva. No? Seva means voluntary service done without any expectations, you know, uh, in line with uh, God's uh, teachings in the scriptures. So, when you are in touch with devotees of God, they will teach you how to engage in some voluntary seva. So, A, B, C, D, E. If you do these five things, it is food for the soul. Is it clear, Soham? Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Mansi Prabhavalkar, please go ahead. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so, we have come to this life, we have been a number of And the first part is telling me that this is the You know, uh, Thank you. Good question. In uh, Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, Lord Krishna says, Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan gunan karanam guna sangosya sad asat yoni janmasu. He says that, depending on your action, sad asat yoni janmasu. He says, sad yoni means human form or a devata form. And asad yoni means animals, birds, aquatics, which are considered dull, dull creatures. One can attain sad asat yoni, he is saying. Which means the spirit can go to either higher yonis, higher wombs or lower wombs. Both are possible. He says that. And uh, when we take birth after birth, what happens is, you know, just like say, for example, I got a marble block and I chisel out unwanted portion. I keep on doing it. Then I go for my lunch, come back. Again, I chisel out. I chisel out, chisel out, chisel out. After some days, a beautiful murti will come out, isn't it? Similarly, God wants to bring out a beautiful angel-like personality out of us. And he gives us a chance. Say, in this life, I have 100 bugs with which I have come. So, I debug my mind of the impurity. Say, 20 bugs are removed. Then I go to the next life uh, with 80 bugs. And then another 30 bugs I remove. Huh? The next life. I had 50 bugs. When all the 100 bugs are removed, the mind is clean, my beautiful personality comes out. Then I go from material plane to spiritual plane. Is that clear? Yes. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Mr. Vishan Vilas Kamle. Thank you. Oh. 
Okay. You see, Lord, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, uh, Arjuna, the goal of life is not to sit back and just do meditation. In 6.1, Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Anashita karma phalam karyam karma karotiyaha sasanyasi cha yogi cha nani ragnet na chakriyaha He told Arjuna that uh, even sannyasis, even they have to work hard, he says. What to speak of a commoner? Huh? He says that everybody should work in this world because soul by nature is very active. Soul is not passive, hmm? but he is active in the spiritual plane. When he comes to the material plane, he is materially active and that material activity is entangling. For example, take Arjuna, take Duryodhana. Arjuna has chariot, Duryodhana has chariot. Arjuna has bows arrows, Duryodhana has bows and arrows. Arjuna is having horses, Duryodhana has horses. And both are in the war. They look the same. But the difference is, Arjuna fought a dharmic war on the order of Lord Krishna. Uh, in order to bring about great good to the world. Whereas Duryodhana fought the war for his own self-aggrandizement and selfish gratification. Right now. So their purpose was different. Uh, so just like in those days we used to have a, an audio cassette which has two spools. As you rotate, you know, one spool is getting unwound, another spool is getting wound more and more. Similarly, Arjuna is getting unwound from his karmic account by obedience to God and alignment with Dharma. Whereas Duryodhana is getting more and more wound up and getting entangled like that. So in the same manner, we are not supposed to be idle. Now the, as a soul, you have come into this particular body. You have a conditional duty and constitutional duty. Constitutional duty is the duty of soul. Conditional duty is duty to your bodily relationships. So conditional duty is like horizontal and constitutional duty is like vertical. So the horizontal duty is to your mother, father family, friends, society, that is horizontal duty. And the vertical duty is towards God and uh, for the emancipation of the soul. Huh? So according to Bhagavad Gita, you should uh, fulfill both the duties. Huh? Because everybody cannot become a monk, leave everything and go to God. Now, only few will do that. Uh, even You will see the monks' uh, population in Eskhan will be 0.001 or something, 0 0.01, very less than 1%. 99% huh? of the people. Uh, they will need a marriage and children and family and profession. So, Lord Krishna teaches in Gita, you don't have to run away from all these things. You can live in the society like a lotus is in the middle of muddy pool of water, but the lotus doesn't become dirty. Lotus remains fresh. Similarly, in the course of our learning, you will see how you can protect your pure consciousness even while living in the world, you know, uh, all around you. Uh, it's possible. Like a drop of water on a lotus leaf. So Arjuna was a warrior. Krishna didn't, Krishna didn't tell him you give up everything and come. He didn't tell him. He told him you be a warrior, but offer your fruits of activities to God. Like that he told him. Is that all right? Yes, you can do that. It's like a railway line. Ma manusmara yudhyacha. He says, Tasma sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhyacha. Remembering me, which is spiritual, fight the battle, which is material. So it's like a railway line. You can take both hand in hand. Krishna says that. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. And Vivek Singh, what's your question? Yeah. Actually, you you get. You cannot uh, experience the death. Why? Because you are an eternal soul. You always feel, I will never die. You feel like that. The reason is, the soul by nature is eternal. Soul never dies. And what dies is actually the body. You know, body also at certain point of time becomes invalid. Say like kidney is not working properly, or liver is not working, or there is a brain hemorrhage, or you know, or a heart, uh, massive heart attack or something. So the body just gets stripped off from the soul. And then soul takes another body. So we will never understand uh, uh, what is the meaning of death. And, and that's uh, because the soul doesn't feel that I'm going to die. Because you always feel you are young, you are fresh and you are eternal. Correct, no? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Abhishek? Yeah. 
you see there are four stages jagrati swapna shushupti samadhi right now you are in jagrati state you are fully wide awake huh? and swapna in the night when you lie down you get dream huh? so at that time you know the soul goes into a dream plane where you think you are a king or you are this or you are that something else you think and in that dream body you forget this body huh? in this body you forget the dream body hmm? but shushupti is a deep sleep state when there is you are neither awake nor dreaming it's deep sleep state maybe 12 to 2 or something huh? and then the samadhi is a stage fourth stage where you clearly know that i am uh, you know different from this body i am a pure uh, spirit soul and this jagrati state and swapna state uh, these are all temporary situations i am truly the spirit soul in samadhi that you can realize is that clear Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one more question by Vivek here. Why only few people can remember and recall their past life? If soul never dies, are there new souls entering this world? Because population is increase, going on increasing. In the beginning, it is presented that the brain serves the purpose of memory unit. How can soul maintain the memory once it uh, left the body? Ah, okay. Actually, brain is different from the mind. Brain is like hardware. Mind is software. Uh, my mind is actually subtler than the brain also no uh? and the um, mind covering the soul goes with the soul birth after birth and regarding population increase i'll tell you the reason why as this uh, age is called kali yuga the number of souls getting emancipated and going to the spiritual plane have become reduced now and so most people are detained and brought back to human life again like in 7th 8th 9th standard people pass very easily and they go to 10th standard it's a board exam people who fail that's why the number of people keeps increasing in the 10th standard like say 25 students from 7 to 28 8 to 9 9 to 10 but in 10th only 10 pass then 15 are detained and that's why the population is increasing amongst the humans mm -hmm. yeah and uh, here is one uh, question okay how do we handle lust is it never ending to have feelings for someone or the other she fantasize their bodies yeah Actually, lust means adamant desire for the prohibited things. Uh, that is the things. Uh, the lust is like uh, like Lord Krishna says, "Dushpure na anale na chhod." If you pour petrol in fire, it's only going to grow more. That is the method of handling lust. Lust has to be transformed into pure love, uh, and that is one of the goals of this course. When you finish the four lessons, you will be able to appreciate that point more. Uh. Actually, lust is a downward vector. Now you have to make it an upward vector. No. Like for example, Ravana had lust, Hanuman had love. No. Now Ravana wanted to exploit and enjoy. Hanuman wanted to serve and satisfy the Lord, Sita Ram, isn't it? So when you come to the spiritual path, you start developing seva bhav, service attitude. Gradually, the uh, lust for exploitation can be diminished and transformed into love. Uh, it's like X and one minus X. If my lust is reduced, then love will increase. and a time will come and we will only purely love we will transcend lust hmm? yeah so now it's getting late if any of you uh, is getting late you can uh, join the next class but i i am going to be here for another 5 6 minutes i can be the available for you there is one uh, uh, question here what uh, what happens when someone dies in sleep in sleep he is not chanting or remembering god uh, does he go back to god like we have not control over thoughts in sleep no no worry uh, in the varaha purana lord says if someone has served me faithfully in adult age when they were hale and healthy and in their old age they got into coma comatose state and they died without remembering me uh, i personally come and take them back to godhead like the lord says that the lord is not a stereotyped person uh, he is a very conscious person He recognizes and remembers gratefully the services you have rendered. Hmm? Yeah, and uh, okay, okay. And then, how to stay uh, fixed consciousness of God consciousness? Brilliant, Bhaviam Kumar. Very nice person. Hmm? Actually, this comes by the day B C D. I told you. Huh? A for association, B for Bhagavata reading up one page a day. C for chanting one round a day. Begin with these things. D for devotional diet and E for seva. Hmm? 
and uh, you, one one devotee is asking the soul has a gender so soul is called prakriti and god is called purusha uh, god is predominator we are predominated he is master we are servant uh, he is the lord he is the boss we are das uh, so in the spiritual world although the souls may appear to be uh, in different forms uh, they all have only one nature they all are subordinate they are called prakriti uh, the soul has a form uh, sachidananda swarupam it has a swarupa uh, like for example when krishna descends in this world from the spiritual world in the spiritual world that's a description there are gopas there are gopis there are cows calves all their bodies are made up of spiritual forms uh, and there are male and female forms but both of them are prakriti we call it which means they are subordinate to the lord and they serve the lord uh, then uh, uh one of my friend has medical condition of uh, pcod uh, and she suffers with regular uh, cycles and continued blood flow but she wants to do puja and also pour water during shravan on uh, shivalinga but she is hesitant in doing so kindly help whether she could do puja or not oh her very desire to do that puja itself is great huh? the lord is very kind he accepts the seva bhav huh? accept the service attitude and even if she doesn't do it due to her health issue lord will not mind it huh? he will not feel bad she can uh, ask someone else to do it on her behalf and she can stand at a distance and watch it that will have the equal effect okay and according to the uh, the another question according to the respective puranas uh, that respect god or goodness is supreme what is the hiding truth behind it as a as i am walking in the path of worship in divine mother goddess i followed devi puran is it wrong or any suggestion you want to add sir see god is uh, simultaneously male and female shiva and shakti yeah. krishna and radha lakshmi and narayan yeah. so they have to be worshiped together yeah. shakti and shakti man should be worshiped together uh, we don't worship only one of them yeah. we should worship them together because just like sun and sunlight uh, together they have to be worshiped like that and shiva and parvati they they are uh, actually father and mother of the material energy where we are living now uh, uh, she is the personified material energy similarly radha and krishna lakshmi narayan they are personified uh, in the spiritual world they are the persons who are predominating god and goddess uh, lakshmi narayan sita ram radha krishna in this world uh, when uh, lord expands to shiva shiva and uh, parvati or shiva and durga they are the presiding deity so you are worshiping the divine mother that's wonderful worshiping durga you worship shiva and durga together mm-hmm. and when you are chanting hare krishna you are also worshiping radha and krishna together huh? so that was a good question thank you and uh, uh, i think yeah, most of the questions are answered i think good very sincere questions Okay, here I recently watched a movie. Uh, Kalki want to know more insights into the last Vishnu Avatar. According to the Puranas, there are four lakh twenty-seven thousand years are still left for Kalki to come. Already many human beings are claiming to be Kalki. That is all unacceptable. It is four lakh twenty-seven thousand years are still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, is number of souls in our universe constant? He is asking because of the population. I think already explained that. Mm-hmm. so there are some more questions and uh, uh uh we will take more questions next time i also have another uh, event uh, lined up for me but uh, thank you all for your enthusiasm and uh, uh interest for coming for the session today same time we will meet next sunday 1:30 to 2:30 and we will continue uh, session and uh, if you had any further questions harshit uh, harshit you are given them a uh, google link you are given if they can put the questions there yeah you are welcome to yeah thank you thank you very much arrange